Hello, this is Amy with Amy Astro. I'm back with the next video in the How to Use PixInsight series. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe below and click the alert bell so you know when I upload new videos. Leave comments below with questions or advice. Special thank you to the comment on a previous video. I learned something new and will incorporate it in the following videos. In this video, we are going to start combining some of the elements you learned in my previous videos. We will work through the Elephant Trunk Nebula step by step over the next few videos. Today, I will show you how to calibrate your flat images and integrate them into a single master flat file. Unlike the Earth, our photos should be flat. Let's start looking at what we have in our folders. Do we have all of our images imported from our camera? What about the flat files? So we've got our folder structure here that we learned how to do in a previous video and I've got it all expanded out for you. Uh, the last video I showed you how to create your super bias and a master dark frame. All the images that we're going to be working with today are done at 300 seconds at minus 10 degrees Celsius. All right, now here's my flats and I've got them all sitting in here. I take about 40 each. So I've got one for each of the narrow band that I took the other night. Now don't worry, when I say I'm working with a mono camera, I will show you exactly where we deviate and if we were dealing with a color camera. We're going to use the same thought process, so hang on, don't worry, I will show you. Okay, so I approach flats a little differently than most. And the reason being is I have a rotator on my telescope. So I plan every image with the mosaic tool in Sequence Generator Pro. And since I rotate my camera every time out, I need a fresh set of flats every session. And I typically spend about an hour the following morning creating my flats at the current rotation for each filter that I use that night. And remember, the flats remove the vignette of the scope train and the little dust bunnies that show up when you're not looking. Now, if your camera stays attached to the telescope and never, never rotates, you have the possibility to reuse your flats for a short time. And I say a short time, it really depends on you and if dust gets into the optic train. The first time you twist your camera or it gets dusty on you, you're going to need to do new flat frames. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create master flats with each one of our filters. We'll go ahead and we've got three times, so that's three times of practice here. And by the end, you're going to understand how to do a flat frame. All right, so let's go over to Pixit's site. Now, I have opened up my template project that we created last time. And since we've already got our super bias and our dark frame, master dark, we need to go over here to calibration and let's calibrate our flat frames. I'm going to add the files. And we are going to go to where we've got the files stored. Let's see, they are going to be over here under calibration, flat. We'll start with hydrogen alpha and let's grab all of them and say open. The output directory is going to be, go back to there, to the HA, we'll bump up one. And there's our flat HA calibrated. That's so where we're going to copy all of them to. We do have a master bias, so let's go get him. And we have him here with our bias. He is super. And we do have a master dark that we created at 300 seconds. So we want to be able to be sure to use the 300 second version. There's our dark, 300 seconds, and we'll open him. We do not have a master flat because that is what we are creating right now. Let's see, anything else that we want to do? We've got this optimized, and it's optimized because these are taken at different lengths of time than our flats. So all we have to do now is apply global. And we'll speed this process up. All right, we're back. The images are done calibrating. Let's look over here in our finder. 
and this folder should be populated. There it is. And you notice here at the end, it has an underbar C added to your file. That stands for calibration. All right, so I have a tendency to like to do all of them at once as far as each filter dealing with the calibration. So I'm gonna clear this out and I'm gonna go add my oxygen. It's calibration, flat, let's go to flat oxygen. Let's grab all of them, open. All right, we've got all of our flat oxygens loaded up in here. Let's change our directory for the output. Go back to flat and flat oxygen calibrated and open. Same master bias, same master dark. You notice we're gonna evaluate noise up here. We're gonna optimize down here. And this one stays unchecked. We're gonna apply globally. This is probably the worst part of everything is waiting for the processes to run because it's about three or four minutes to process. Be right back. All right, the oxygen are done. Let's clear these out and move on to sulfur. Add files, go to the flat sulfur, grab them, open. Let's change our directory. And run, everything else stays the same. This is why I like to do them all together because I only have to open this window once. I only have to change these settings once, get them all done and over with, and that's it. All right, we're back. All the images are calibrated. Now, if you are on a color camera, all you have to do is this one time. I have to do this each time per filter, but you only have to do this once. So you get done a lot faster than I do. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clear this out and get ready for next time and we're going to minimize this. It pops back over there. And now it's time to integrate all of our flats so we get master flats. So we'll add files and let's work back. Go back to the hydrogen alpha calibrated folder, grab them, open them. All right, we are going to do average. Right here, we're gonna do multiplicative. The weights, will be don't care, all equal one. We're gonna generate an integrated image. We will evaluate noise. Shrink that one up. Let's go to pixel rejection one. The rejection algorithm will be percentile clipping. And the normalization will be we're gonna equalize the flux. Okay, we can generate the rejection maps if we wanna see what they look like. Typically, I don't see a whole lot with that. I'm not gonna worry about it. We're gonna clip the low and we're gonna clip the high. That's it, nothing else. So let's process. Now remember, I'm gonna do this three times, but if you're on a color camera, you only have to do this once. All right, our flat is ready. We've got one hydrogen alpha flat. Now let's see what it looks like. Let's give it a stretch. There we go. Let's blow this up so you can see it just a little bit better. Move this out of your way. All right, here's some vignetting going on that this flat will help us get rid of. Look closely, I have a couple dust bunnies. These guys are probably pretty close to the sensor. If they were on the sensor though, they would be jet black. So I've got another one over here. So my guess is are these are either on my filter or they could be on the field flattener. But what's gonna make us decide this? If this is a hydrogen alpha filter, and the next one that I do is oxygen, and if those spots are in the same spot, then they could be at the end of the flat. Oh, they could also be on the glass cover of the sensor. Now, if I wanted to, I could take time, find it, clean it, but trust me when I say, these guys are gonna disappear, you will never know that they existed. So let's give this guy a name. I'm gonna right mouse click, identifier. I'm gonna call this a flat, underbar, HA. And let's remember to save this. So file, save as. All right, let's find my directory. I think it's on my desktop. And elephant, and calibration. 
flats. That's where he's going to go. Flat HA. Save. And agree. Make sure we are XISF. OK. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Let's say clear. Add files. Now we will go to oxygen, to the calibrated ones. Grab all of them. If you didn't know, these oxygens are taken at 4.31 seconds. Now, if you're using Sequence Generator Pro, there's a wizard in there that will help you determine what length of time you need to take this photo. It's really handy. Now, all of these, they stay the same. No change whatsoever. So let's apply global and let it run. All right, we're back. The oxygen is ready to use. Let's give it a stretch. See how he looks. I'm going to make him bigger. Let's minimize this for right now. Let's slide it over and check that out. Spot. Same spot. So I have the sneaky feeling that it's on the glass of the sensor, the, the glass that's hanging outside of the sensor. Because if this was further down the optic train, it would grow in size. If this was all the way at the end of the lens, it would be much larger. Almost like, look over here, you see this big round spot? I bet you that's towards the end of my optic train somewhere. I've got a hint of them on this filter and a hint of them on this filter, so he is somewhere down the line. But honestly, once I'm done processing, we're never going to see him again. So let's go ahead and give this guy a name with the right click identifier. He is our flat oxygen three. Okay. File, save as. All right, we'll drop him in the same location. He's already named. Save and agree. We can leave these open or close them, but honestly, I don't need them on my screen. So let's just, well, I'll tell you what, I'll leave it open for right now until we get this last one done. Let's do image integration. All right, wake up. There we go. Clear. Add files. Let's go find our sulfur. You can see repetition is the key to remembering all this. So with a mono camera, I promise you, you're going to have lots of repetition. So it won't take you long at all to remember any of these settings. I'm going to apply global and I'll be back when it's done thinking. All right, our sulfur is done. Let's stretch them. Take another peek. Make them bigger. And same spots. So this one here, you don't see too much. I'm going to clear this guy, shrink him down. And let's save him. Well, let's name him first. Identifier flat silver two. Okay. File save as. And let's put him in there. All right. So we're done with these files. Now that we have bias, master dark, and master flats created. It's time to start working with the light images. My next video will pick up where we left off. Till next time, this is Amy with Amy Astro, Clear Skies.